morning everyone! Welcome to Water Bay Reads where I discuss illustrated classics and modern classics. My name is Heather. In my previous video I showed you guys all the books that I received for my birthday and for Mother's Day, the new books. And in this video I wanted to show you all the secondhand books that I received. My family and I keep a wish list and um, I always add secondhand books to my wish list just as much as I do new books. And so I have quite a few secondhand books to show you. On top of that, I have some other books that I've just picked up on my own that I wanted to show you. I have my tea here, still keeping with my tea, still trying to stay away from coffee. <laughs> so I'll just take a sip of tea and then we'll get started. I always begin these book haul videos with an illustrated item that I've been enjoying and since these are secondhand books I thought I would show you the, my newest Cricut magazines that I've picked up. I love collecting these magazines because they have within them um, articles and stories written by authors and illustrated by illustrators that are now considered modern classics. For example, this one is by Joan Aiken. The Looking Glass Tree, and it's illustrated by Shirley Hughes, who is definitely a well-known illustrator of modern classic quality. Um, and it's peppered with illustrations such as this and authors such as this throughout. This is the July 1977 right here, and they're always so pretty. First of all, they have this table of contents border, which is so unique and beautiful. And Trina Shart Hyman was their first art director, so a lot of her artwork is to be found throughout. And there's always a surprise. For example, in my last video, I was talking about um, Margot Binnery Ispert, and her book Blue Mystery was um, illustrated by Enrico Arno. And I found one of his illustrations in here as well, which I just thought was beautiful. She had another book that I read earlier this year too called The Wicked Enchantment, which is really great. It's set at Easter time, and that was also illustrated by Enrico Arno. And then this one is the June 1978, and it also has that beautiful border. There's foxgloves and butterflies. Here's some by Jan Brett. And at that time, I guess her name was Jan Brett Bowler. Bowler. These illustrations are by John Vernon Lord, who you might know if you are a fan of the Giant Jam Sandwich, which is one of my uh, favorite books that my son and I read together. Here is um, an illustration by Mercer Mayer, who you would know if you are a fan of the Little Critter series. We read many of these. Yeah, so anyway, I just really love these magazines, these cricket magazines, and I pick up one off eBay every now and then just to see which illustrators or authors are inside them. It's really fascinating to me. So old vintage Cricut magazines. Picked up two new Tasha Tudors. One was a gift from my in-laws and it's her version of The Wind in the Willows and it has the protective covering on it. But um, I have wanted this book for so long and I'm so happy to have it. It's really precious to me and I'm so grateful to them for getting this for my birthday and I love the end papers are so pretty and here's a full page spread and one full page. Tasha Tudor is a well-loved American illustrator and she has a farm in Vermont or had a farm in Vermont and I'd love to visit it one day as I've told you guys but it's closed at the moment but yeah, it's one of the one day I'd like to get over there and I'll take you guys with me if I can. She was actually born in Boston, Massachusetts, but lived in various places throughout her life in various states. I believe um, there was Massachusetts and Vermont and then I think the other two were Connecticut and New Hampshire. But I just love her work. Let me show you the other book that I purchased, but I just wanted to tell you real quick. My younger sister and her family came to visit not too long ago. And while I was taking them around to see the sites, I picked up this from the Maine Antiquarium Booksellers Association. It's a pamphlet that has a ton of used booksellers throughout the state of Maine. And it's huge. It has all these listings and a map to show where they are. And so I'm going to start using this to go visit some bookstores around me. And I already visited one of them. And when I was there, I picked up a little princess. And I had actually been looking for this because this is on my son and my re autumn reading list. 
so I was so happy to find it and it's really pretty beautiful under the dust jacket and then on the inside we have the um, Tasha Tudor's beautiful pencil drawings here's one that I really loved but yeah, I was so happy to find Tasha Tudor's version of A Little Princess because this is the one I really wanted to read. There are some other pretty little princesses out there, but I kind of just really wanted this one for that story. I've mentioned this illustrator on my channel several times before. I showed you my the secret garden that I purchased once off Amazon for $5, <laughs> which was such a lucky find. And then in my Little Women um, video, I showed you her version of Little Women, which I don't have the dust jacket. I'd like to get one with a dust jacket one day, but I showed you this book in my Little Women Illustrator Explorer, and I just wanted to show you. I love Tasha Tudor's work. I love her pencil drawings as well as her color work. I also received another Illustrated Junior Library edition, and it is The Secret Garden. I took off the covering so that it's easier to see, but it's just so pretty. And it's illustrated by Kathy Mitchell, who I had a really hard time finding information about. Um, but she is also the one who illustrates their, the Illustrated Junior Library edition of Jane Eyre which is another one I'd like to get. Soon before I started my YouTube channel, I had acquired Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing uh, by Judy Bloom, illustrated by Roy Doty. And I love his illustrations. They're so nostalgic for me. <laughs> it's such a pity that these days, most of the newer publications don't have his illustrations, which I think is such a shame because part of reading the Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing is those illustrations. They're just such a part of the story. I'll show them to you just to remind you. And I love Roy Doty. Roy Doty's artwork is just perfect for this tale. Here's another one. And I really love them. And it's, there's the back of the book as well. So anyway, I had already had this one. And on my wish list, I had asked for the second one, otherwise known as Sheila the Great. And I couldn't remember if this one had been illustrated or not, but it turns out that it is not illustrated on the inside, but Roy Doty did do the cover artwork. And so I was very happy to receive it. And under the dust jacket is the puppy. So now I'm on the lookout for the next one, Super Fudge. I love these old Dutton versions. I think they're just wonderful with Roy Doty's artwork on the covers. Roy Doty was born in Chicago and served in World War II and unfortunately he passed away in 2015. But he actually had a show for a short period in 1953 where he would sort of teach kids to draw while telling a story at the same time, which I thought was really cool. I had not known that until I was researching for this video. But yeah, that's Roy Doty's, otherwise known as Sheila the Great. A book that I've known about and have been wanting to read for a while now is Period Piece by Gwen Ravarat. And I found this version at an antique store that is within walking distance of me. It's a huge antique store and then you go down into the basement and it's filled with books. And usually I walk forward and I go to all the children's books, but recently I realized if you turn to the left and you go into the back a little bit, there's this one seller who picks up the most wonderful books. And I have a few here that I'm going to show you that I picked up from her area. And one of them is Period Piece by Gwen Ravarat. And I've been looking forward to this. It's set in late Victorian period and it follows the life of the author who grew up in Cambridge as the granddaughter of Charles Darwin. She's also just as much an illustrator as an author, and I'll show you some of her work. She has some beautiful, wonderful sketches and drawings throughout this book. There's one of them. Here's another one. So yeah, just I'm looking forward to reading this one, and I'm so happy to have found it. Some other books that I found at that antique store in that new area is two by Elizabeth Coatsworth, who I spoke to you about in my last video as being an author who lived in Maine with a farm not too far away from me. The ones that I found were Daisy, and this one is illustrated by Junith Gwyn Brown, and The Hand of Apollo, and this one is illustrated by Robin Jocks. I realized that I had actually had another book that was illustrated by Robin Jacques, and that is The Donkey Rustlers. 
and this one is authored by Gerald Durrell, who was the author of My Family and Other Animals, which is another book that I hear a lot about and I want to get to. I want to read that one. I took the cover off of this one as well so that you could see it a little bit easier without the ring light. Robin Jocks was a London-born illustrator whose artwork you can find on many classics, but I think he's most well known for being the illustrator to accompany the fairy tale compilations by Ruth Manning Sanders. Some of them have been recently republished. I'll pop them up on the screen there and link one of them below if you're interested. And the other one I picked up is Elizabeth Coatsworth Daisy. And this one seems to be set in Mexico City and it's illustrated by Judith Gwynne Brown, who was based in New York City and if you know the books The Best Christmas Pageant Ever or Mandy by Julie Andrews, she's the illustrator of those two books that you might know. So I thought that was really pretty so I picked that up. Twins in South Africa. One of my little sisters was in San Antonio for a teacher's conference and she had some time to kill so she wandered into a used bookstore and she found this book and it's by Daphne Rook and there seems to be other twin books. There's twins in New Zealand as well as twins in Australia. I love the cover under the dust jacket too. It's so pretty. And here's an illustration. And here's an illustration. My little sister found this and sent it to me and I'm so grateful. It's very interesting. Looking forward to reading that and seeing what it's about. So I picked up a couple of illustrated soft covers and the first one is Rascal by Sterling North. I've been wanting to read this one with my son for a while now and it's the account of the author's experience with a, his pet raccoon and it's illustrated by John Schoenher who um, oddly enough is the first illustrator to ever have illustrated Dune which is funny because I just spoke about Dune in my previous video when I showed you my uh, Folio Society version that I had just received. I believe Dune began as a magazine serial and he was the illustrator of Dune at that point. But I love his illustrations. John Schoenher also illustrated other modern classics that involve animals such as Gentle Ben and Julie of the Wolves. And also if you are a fan of Jane Yolen's Owl Moon, which is a real picture book classic, he was the illustrator of that book as well. So yeah, let me show you. I chose this illustration because it, it had ducks in it, but it's a bit difficult to see. So I'll show you another one. Here, this one's great. It's perfect for late summer lazy days. I also found this copy of Brighty of the Grand Canyon uh, by Marguerite Henry and it's illustrated by Wesley Dennis as most of Marguerite Henry's books are. I've been wanting to read Marguerite Henry's classics with my son um, and Brighty of the Grand Canyon was the first one I'd like to start with. I love Wesley Dennis's illustrations. I think they work so well with what I perceive um, is the tone of the text. Wesley Dennis is an illustrator from Massachusetts and he grew up in Cape Cod and for a while he went to France and studied horse anatomy, drawing horses, and Marguerite Henry came across his work and was really impressed so she contacted him and that began a 20 year long partnership illustrating her classics. I also previously have picked up hardback covers in um, secondhand stores of Misty of Shinkatig as well as King of the Wind and so I have his illustrations in these as well and I always think they're so pretty. By the way I noticed that there's a new version of Misty of Shinkati coming out. I think it comes out in October. Let me show you a couple of the illustrations. There's one. There's an illustration. Yeah I was very happy to find this one and looking forward to reading this. I'll probably put it on our next summer's reading list. Brighty of the Grand Canyon. I have a couple of series that I collect. One are the Bobsy Twins and the others are the Nancy Drew series and I have such fond memories of reading these books at my grandmother and grandfather's house. Their house was all wooden inside and it was two stories and the upstairs had the, a feel of being in the attic and I always used to feel like I was up in the tree house and there were all these secret little closets that you could open and it was just wonderful. So I thought I would show you guys the versions of the Bobsy Twins and Nancy Drew that I've so far collected. I thought I would show you my Bobsy Twins in this video and I thought I'd show you the Nancy Drews in my autumn book haul video which I'll put out uh, in a month or so. The ones that I had already on hand were number 56, 
the Bobsy Twins and the Big River Mystery, as well as number 53, which is the Bobsy Twins in the Mystery Cave, which I just thought, I love these. These are all 1960s rewrites, and they're kind of known as the Lavender Editions. Oh, and I almost forgot, I also had this one, number one, the Bobsy Twins of Lakeport. I had that one as well. And over the last few months, I picked up some more. The Bobsy Twins Adventure in the Country, which is number two. And then the Bobsy Twins number four, which is Mystery at School. And number 19, which is the Bobsy Twins and the Four Leaf Clover Mystery. The last book that I want to show you that is illustrated is the Folio Society version of the Scarlet Pimpernel. One of my closest friends, Erica, her husband was at a I think it was a Goodwill or some secondhand shop and he found this version and he picked it up for me. He knew I had read The Scarlet Pimpernel earlier this year and that I really enjoyed it. And I was so grateful to have it. It's really cool. It comes with a, a slip case. And this one is from 1997 and it has an introduction by Hilary Mantel and it's illustrated by Lucy Weller who is in theater design as well as illustration. I think most of her work is in costume design for theater production. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. It's a good choice considering the subject matter. And so I wanted to show you one of her illustrations. These pages are glossy, but yeah, so I just thought it's really interesting and I'm very glad to have an illustrated version of The Scarlet Pimpernel, which is absolutely one of my favorite books of the year so far. I have some non-illustrated books that I want to show you and many of these or most of these actually are books that I picked up in that antique store area that I newly found that I told you about. The first two are This Rough Magic by Mary Stewart and Mary Stewart's The Ga Gabriel Hounds. I've only read one of Mary Stewart's works, The Moon Spinners, because The Moon Spinners is one of my mom's favorite movies. And when I found out that it was a book as well, I decided to read it. So I want to read more of Mary Stewart's work. And these covers are illustrated by Charles Gere. And I mention him because he is also an illustrator of several children's books. If you know the Miss Pickerel series, or if you know the Mad Scientist Club, which incidentally, the publishing company that I spoke about in my last video, Purple House Press, has been republishing the Mad Scientist Club books. So I thought that was really cool and interesting. And then another wonderful find was this version of Three Men in a Boat with cover illustration by Ronald Searle. I love Ronald Searle's artwork. I have my eye on his version of A Christmas Carol, which is one I've been wanting to add to my library for some time. I just love his illustrations. They just make me so happy. And this one I may have passed up if it wasn't for Miranda Mills' channel, and it's The Go-Between by L.P. Hartley. And she really liked this book and has chatted about it a bit. And so when I saw it, I decided to pick it up. So thank you, Miranda, for that. And then I found The Four Graces by D.E. Stevenson, which is the fourth book in the Miss Bunkle series. And I'm wondering if I need to wait and read the other three first, or if I can go ahead and just read The Four Graces. If anyone knows, please let me know if I can just go ahead and read this or if I should read the other three first. But I looked it up on Goodreads and Goodreads describes it as little women set in World War II. <laughs> so, so I'm very intrigued with that. In my last video, I told you guys I had just finished reading this beautiful version by Manderley Press, um, China Court by Rumor Godden and how much I liked it. And so I've been looking for more of Rumor Godden's works and I found this one, The River, and I'm really interested. I think it's set in India, but yeah, I'm very curious to read this one too. Well, that is it. Let me know if you are a collector of any of these titles or which ones appeal to you. My son and I are heading to Texas tomorrow morning to visit my dad and my stepmom and my sisters and brother and my twin nephews. I can't wait to be there and see everyone. And also what's special about going to Texas is my stepmom takes me to all these garage sales and secondhand stores and I end up finding the best books. So I'm very excited about that. I hope that wherever you are in the world, I hope you remember to enjoy the beautiful things in life and I will see you in my next video. Bye.